Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And I thought in today's episode I would do something towards making that super hit radio. Yes, I haven't forgotten about it, it's just the fact that I don't have any suitable IF cans at the moment because I accidentally destroyed the one that might have been suitable. There'll be more about that later, but I thought, for now, come up with a circuit for a local oscillator, or at least part of a circuit for a local oscillator, and see about making a circuit that can test for coil resonance. Okay, so I thought I'd start out with making a local oscillator, or um, experimenting with an oscillator circuit, and for some reason I didn't say this when I shot this video so I'm just adding this narrative in right now because for some reason in the video I just went gallivanting off without even explaining what the circuit is so that's what this circuit is it's a little oscillator that I made using a JFET and yes I will put up a schematic in a couple of seconds so enough rambling on with the video so let's test out this little circuit this is the schematic for those of you who are interested. For now I'm just using a crystal, just something that it can oscillate with. So I'm going to turn the power on. You can see the scope on the readout, I mean the readout on the scope courtesy of the other camera. And at first it doesn't look like it's going to work. The thing is, this oscillator needs to be sort of kick-started. So if I just touch the gate the MOSFET, that should start. And there we go. We now has an oscillation. I had a little bit of trouble with this circuit at first, trying to make it working, it wasn't oscillating. And I decided to add a diode between the gate and the ground, and that seemed to sort out the problem. It's a lot more stable now. So, let's see what the frequency is. Got to do this quickly, because I've got a lasagna doing in the oven. I don't mean one I bought from the shop or something, I mean one that I made from scratch. So I've got to keep an eye on that, to make sure it doesn't burn. Okay, let's just probe, I can find it. Probe the gate. I don't mean the gate, I mean the drain. And look at that 4.43 megahertz. And if we take a look at the crystal, if the camera will focus on it, I can't really, yeah, can't make it out because the camera's not focusing, but. That is a 4.43 megahertz crystal, so that is working nice and good. Okay, I'm going to try with a coil now, just a coil on its own. See if I can get this to oscillate. So it's not started oscillating. See if I can kickstart it. This one seems a little reluctant to oscillate. Maybe if I change the capacitor, see. Pull a random smaller capacitor out of my parts box, see if it works with this one. Going on. Ah, there we are. Just happen to be using too large of a capacitor. So let's see what the frequency is. Of course I don't know how much that parasitic capacitance in the circuit is going to affect the actual resonant frequency of the coil. Just curious to what the actual frequency is, if we can see that. Alright, that's about 2.095 megahertz, and it stopped oscillating, so let's just start that again. I don't know what capacitor I've put in there. Let's see, that's a, I think that's a 102, so that's a 1 nanofarad capacitor. Okay, I'm going to try to connect a capacitor across the coil. Still oscillates, come on, work. No, I don't think we're going to get any luck now. Alright, let's put the 222 two, two in. See if it still oscillates. Also, I want to see if that changes the frequency that the circuit oscillates. So, this is a 2.2 nanofarad. And it started up right away. Although that was probably influenced by me touching the capacitor, but see what we got now. Just get that on there. Yeah, it's gone down a bit. Thought it would. Alright, so let's see if we've got a um, the makings of a local oscillator circuit. 
I made another coil and I've got that hooked up to this variable capacitor. I'm going to apply power to the circuit and see if it oscillates at all. I'm generally looking for something in the maybe 2 megahertz to 10 megahertz range. I think maybe if I apply the power suddenly it might come on. Okay, that was worth a try. Still seems to be reluctant to self-start. See, oh yeah, there we go. It's oscillating, although for some reason the display on the scope is really dim. I don't bring that up a little. It seems to be oscillating at a really high frequency. It's a little bit too high for my scope, actually, to show it clearly. I'm not sure what the frequency is, but let's go down. Say let's go down. I mean that could have been on the lowest frequency for, it would do for all I know. Still going good. This is looking good. This is looking good. Oh, we lost it. Let's try to get that to start again. And it's trying to oscillate, so I don't think it's gonna go any lower than that. Okay then. Let's see what the frequency is. Let's hope this is not out of the range of my meter. Just put that in there. Okay, that's 11.8 megahertz. Nice frequency. Let's see what the lowest frequency is before it stops, of course. Okay. Oh. My thing just fell over. Just putting that on top of the scope camera so you can see the waveform a bit better because so much light in this room. And we're at about 3 megahertz, so that's a little bit out of the range which I wanted, but um, I might be able to do something with that. Okay, well, I think I found a much better circuit to use as a local oscillator. I've done a little bit of tinkering and I've come up with this circuit here. Of course, this isn't the complete circuit, it's going to have a buffer stage as well. This is just the oscillator part that I'm testing. Oh, and I believe earlier on I called that a MOSFET, or is that ADFET? It's a JFET. But anyway, this one seems to be able to cover the entire range of the coil. I'll go all the way down. You can see it gets a little bit low, but it's still oscillating. And we'll go all the way up. Works all the way up there as well. So let's see if we can measure the output frequency. Just on this resistor here. Okay, we got about 8.02 megahertz. That's loading down the JFET a little bit, but like I said, I'm going to put a buffer stage on there, so I'm quite happy with the high frequency. Let's see what the low frequency is. And 2.8 megahertz. Well, that's going to give me some decent coverage of the shortwave band, so I think that is what I'm going to use. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, now I've got a good local oscillator, is I'm going to make a little circuit that tests the resonant frequency of the IF cans, so I can make sure that they are 455 kHz. And obviously I need to come up with a circuit that can do that. Now, I tried this circuit first, which should have worked, and all parasitic capacitances aside, it should have oscillated at somewhere near what the resonant frequency of the IF transformer was but instead when I turned it on all I got was a really hot IF transformer I mean not smoking hot but it did burn one of the coils out so I don't know what I did there and yes I did try flipping the connections on the primary to see if that was the problem and it still didn't oscillate maybe I accidentally connected it up to the DC supply rails I mean it's a mistake anybody can make. I mean, you know, I've done that many times before with breadboarding and strip boarding and stuff. 
can very easily mistake one hole for another. So um, I thought, well, what about the classical Jewel Thief circuit? So what I've got here is the classical Jewel Thief circuit. And I'm powering this from about 1.3 volts. You can see on, well, you should be able to see on the meter if there wasn't so much glare. As you can see, if I turn the lights out, it's lighting up that blue LED nice and brightly. So let's have a look at some waveforms. Also, let's see if we can see what frequency it's oscillating at. Measure the collector. And there we go. With this particular coil, we've got 230 kilohertz. And let's have a look at some waveforms, because I don't think anybody's ever shown the waveforms from a Jewel Thief circuit. So, so let's see what the waveform at the collector is. Okay, just have to turn the time base down a little. So there's the waveform at our collector. Let's see what the waveform at the base is. Uh, pretty much what I expected. Alright, I'm going to go back to the collector waveform. And I'm going to unplug the LED and see how that changes it. Okay, I think the frequency's changed a little bit. Let's just see what that is. About 261 kilohertz now. And we've got very nice and very large inductive spike right up there. In fact, let's see if we can see how big that is. So I've got this on 5 volts per division, so we've got a spike there. 5, 10, 15, 20, let's say about 22 volts. And that's what you get when you use a Jewel Thief without an LED. Of course, put the LED back in, puts that to a much more safe level. So, let's see how this works with a different coil. Okay, well let's see if it works with this massive coil here, which I was going to use as gate drive transformer in the Tesla coil project, and then I decided to use something a bit smaller. Okay, plug this into a battery this time. Let's see if it works. And indeed it does. I don't know why the LED doesn't show up very well on the camera, but that's working pretty good. And I don't think I need an oscilloscope or anything like that to tell that this is oscillating at a much lower frequency because I can actually hear it. If I put my ear right close to it, I can actually hear a high-pitched whine coming off that. I'm just going to put the microphone close to that and see if you can hear it. My homemade microphone. Might be able to hear that. Although the audio compression might muffle that somewhat, but let's see what our frequency is. 7.8 kilohertz. So you might be asking yourself, well, what am I actually going to do with this circuit? Well, the thing is, if it can oscillate using an IF transformer from a radio, it might not throw the frequency off too much and it might show me what the actual frequency of the IF transformer is. So if I replace this coil with an IF can and it oscillates around 455 kilohertz, we'll know it's good. Except my hopes aren't high for this kind of circuit, using that kind of circuit for that, so... Uh, but I've got a couple of other ideas. Okay, so another way I can find out the frequency of a coil is to connect an oscillator to it and then see what frequency that the oscillator needs to be set to to get the most output on the scope. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I've got my multimeter connected to the oscillator so we can see what the frequency is and I've got the coil connected to the oscilloscope so we can see the waveform that this oscillator is putting into this coil through this 22 picofarad capacitor. And at the moment you can see 
we've got a nice clean sine wave. Now the thing is, this is only a square wave oscillator. But as you can see, the coil smoothed out to a nice clean sine wave when, we, when we're in resonance, which we're in right now, but if I was to lower or raise the frequency, as you can see it dips right down. So that's with the frequency lowered. This is with the frequency raised. When we're right on that resonant frequency, we get a nice clean sine wave. So if I adjust the variable capacitor to change the resonant frequency of the coil, turn this up a little bit. So the resonant frequency is going to be a little bit higher. So it's, going to, it's right about there. So we're now at about 537 kilohertz. As you can see, as I adjust the tuning capacitor, I can bring that in and out of resonance. So let's go all the way up. With that particular tuning capacitor. Which is right there. It's, uh, certainly a lot of voltage now. That's our high frequency at about 1.057 megahertz. So I'm going to need to take a few windings off that coil because that, I was using that coil in my medium wave radio. I did wonder why I couldn't tune into the really high frequencies, and now I know why. Because the highest frequency with this particular coil and this capacitor, particular capacitor, which is what I was using. Well, only goes up to 1.057 megahertz when it should go up to about 1.6 megahertz. We got a really, really high voltage on that. I reckon with all that resonance, the voltage on this wire is going to be about. We've probably got about 80 volts there. That's a little bit disturbingly high, actually. I've got one of those screwdrivers with the neon light in it, so I'm going to see if it can light the neon light. Okay, time for a bit of a rant. It did not light the light in this screwdriver, which I've taken apart. And do you know why it didn't light the light? Why it didn't light the neon light? Well, this is the, the little light that I took out of it. Which has got itself tied up to the spring. This is not a neon light. This is just an ordinary incandescent light. And that's stupid. You could very easily electrocute yourself with that. To prove it, I'll just connect it up to a battery. An ordinary 9 volt battery, look. Lights up. That does not say neon light to me. As if that was a neon light, that wouldn't have lit up from a 9 volt battery. Okay, so rant over. So, although this seems to work pretty good, I need to make an oscillator that's got a pure 